Hello, welcome to Sold Out Launch Day 3 and today we are crafting your killer tantalizing offer. So if you've done the homework for yesterday, which I really, really, really hope that you did, now is the time to choose two ideas from the exercise that you did yesterday based on the below criteria. Now the criteria that I've laid down is the criteria that I feel is most important for any business. You're out there to make profit. So the whole idea is to make as much profit as quickly as possible and therefore I'm focusing on the things that sell out fastest. Um, and trust me on this, these are the things that you need to be worried about. So let's look at the criteria. Number one, choose the idea that offers a transformation. So not just an improvement, not like a 10% or 20% or 30% or even 40% improvement. Look at the idea that offers a transformation. So you are talking about completely transforming their existing situation because these are the ideas that sell out fastest. Although improvements sound um, interesting, but they don't get compel people to take immediate action. They don't inspire the same kind of urgency like a transformation offer does. So make sure it is a transformational offer, something that totally, completely flips their lives on their heads because that will sell out fastest. Number two, make sure that your chosen demographic, whichever your chosen demographic is, when you did your research on day two, make sure that you, you, you are absolutely sure that they're eager and they're ready to buy. There is a clearly identified need and they're actively looking for a solution. The problem with most of people that I do, that I work with, even the people that I work one-on-one -on -one with, they're trying to target a market that is not actively looking for them. So you have to first convince people on the whole idea of the need. So first you have to create a need and then you have to create a need for your offer. That's not what you want. You want ideas, you want a demographic that is eager and ready to buy and is actively looking for you. They have the need, they've identified the need and they're looking for it. If that's not the case, your whole idea is solid, but your demographic is wrong, you're not going to sell. So please make sure that you go and target someone who's actively looking for this. Number three, your chosen demographic has to be actively paying for the offer. Now, one example that I come across a lot is the offer of recipes. No matter how exciting and sexy and interesting or beautiful your recipes are, people are not typically in the habit of paying for recipes. And it's very hard for get to people to get to get people to pay for recipes, especially high ticket items that only include recipes because there are so many free choices available. So make sure that when you choose final two ideas that you choose, choose them based on these three criteria. Your chosen demographic is actively and eagerly looking for you. They're actively paying for this. They're not getting this information for free. And the off idea offers a transformation, not an improvement. Once you have done that, now you have to craft your tantalizing offer using this value proposition formula. Now there are tons of value proposition formulas and I use all these different ideas, but to keep it simple, this is the one that I recommend for the purpose of this challenge. So you have to have create a tantalizing value proposition formula based on these four elements. The first element is attention through disruption. So you're trying to stand out. Either you send them an email or you post a social media update or you tweet it out or you post it in a group make sure that you get their attention through some sort of disruption. Now, how will you create disruption? You can use a story, you can do some tease, use some sort of a tease, or you can use a qualifying statement, attention, whatever. But the, the, the single most important thing in attention to disruption is that you should be highlighting the biggest pain point that your offer solves. I'm gonna give you an example in a bit. Number two, choose whether you are going to use the dream positioning or the dread positioning. Now, the dream positioning is a positive framing. So once you have your attention, you can paint the, the, the positive picture of solving that certain problem, or you can use the dread sequence. Now, I know that a lot of people are principally against using the dread, uh, dread, dread positioning, but the hardcore reality is that dread sells so much more than dream. People may uh, appear to be positive, they may tell you that they don't like when someone tries to do fear mongering, they hate when someone tries to create a sense of negativity and fear, but the fact is fear sells a lot more than um, the dream. So a dread sequence sells better, but also do what is best for your audience and for your own um, comfort level. If you're not comfortable using dread sequence, don't use it. But you have to paint a picture through first person or story narrative, and I'm gonna show you this in a bit. 
Number three, open a curiosity gap by hinting at the process or the secret. You cannot, and this is some of, one of the things that I see so many in so many social media posts. People post their value proposition. They do not hint at the process or the secret that people should be excited about. And number two, they don't open curiosity gaps. So there is absolutely no curiosity. The answer is in the post. So no one is tempted to do anything. And the last one is the call to action to gauge interest. So you're not giving them a call to action to buy. You're only giving them a call to action to gauge interest. Let's look at the example of how this works. Number one, attention to disruption. Let's say you have a Facebook ads course that teaches them some of the, you know, from the trenches kind of Facebook ad techniques that no one is teaching. Your attention to disruption could be the million dollar mistake you make every time you create a Facebook ad, something like that. And then we get into the dread sequence or dread positioning. They told Susan that Facebook ads are the only way to grow her business, to get tons of traffic. She was excited about the idea. She wanted to jump in uh, head first. She pumped money, but then something happened. Still one day she lost all her money. So you're, you're using a story to paint a dread positioning. You can use first action. You can say I was the one, or you can use statistics. You can use anything. The idea here is to kind of twist the knife and show, show them what the pain point is. Then we're going to get into open curiosity gap by hinting at the process. Do you know what the million dollar mistake was? Do you want to guard yourself against the same nightmare? I'm sure you do. It's so simple that even your eight year old can implement it if she knows how. So you're not telling her what the secret is. You're not telling her what the process is. You're hinting it. You're opening curiosity gap. And then the call to action, depending on where you're doing it, if you are putting it in your email list, you can say reply to this email, or you can just say, you know, drop me an email, whatever, and I'll be happy to share this at absolutely no cost. You're only doing this to gauge interest do this it will it will not only work to test out the idea it will also help you clarify all these different um, hidden things that you don't know about your own offer so here's your assignment craft your own tantalizing offer and post in the group or on your profile or even to your mailing list and then let us know what the response was don't forget to use the hashtag sold out launch and i will see you tomorrow with the next tip bye